Oh, you serious? Hey, everybody, in this episode of After Buzz TV Spotlight On, we're going to be getting up close and personal with Spencer Garrett, Jack Coleman, and J.S. Mayank. Let's do it. You're tuned in to After Buzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz begin. All right, a little bit of the West Wing intro playing for you folks, and there's a reason for that. Welcome to After Buzz TV Spotlight On. Usually this is the show where we talk to some of the people involved in your favorite TV shows. Today we're going to do something different. We're going to go behind the mic and talk to some of the people involved in one of your favorite podcasts. I'm your host, Frank Moran. Now, my guests today, uh, two of you have have known them uh, for their illustrious television career. One has been seen on shows such as Bosch, The Magicians, Notorious, uh, excuse me, Unsolved, The Murders of Tupac Shakur, and Notorious B.I.G. The other has been seen on shows like Scandal, Castle, How to Get Away with Murder, but you probably know them better, and most memorably, for Heroes and Heroes Were Born. And our writer and creator of the show we're about to talk about here is a uh, Tribeca Tribeca Fellow and also gets a brag about being not only a screenwriter and a director, but being mentored by Damon Lindelof. Ladies and gentlemen, they're all involved now in a very cool new six-part narrative scripted podcast called America 2.0, along with such other heavy hitters as Patrick J. Adams. Uh, uh, we've got uh, uh, Patrick J. Adams. I blanked there for a second there. Uh, Lawrence Fishburne, Autumn Reeser, Kate Walsh, Ming Na Wen. It's six-part series, and the season finale, or... Maybe I should say series finale. We'll see. We're going to find out about that. Drops tomorrow, October 17th. Please welcome Spencer Garrett, Jack Coleman, and J.S. Mayank. Yay. Oh, look at that. Thank you. All right. Gentlemen, well done. welcome. That was a mouthful. You that was a mouthful. Squeeze that all in. Well oh, done. Oh, my Long goodness. Name. Yeah, nicely yes. done. There you go. Blank there. There's such a heavy hitter of lineup. So I apologize for blanking momentarily on this great lineup of We really only have here. one heavy hitter. Yeah, here that's right. Room. Yes. That's, absolutely. That's Jack well, only one obese. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Well, I had the opportunity to meet Spencer a while back when we did a show together yeah. here, so and followed you on Twitter, so to see how you were involved in political causes. Uh, Jack, though, first time meeting, but as I was doing some uh, research about you, finding out that you have a grandfather that won a Pulitzer Prize in history for mm-hmm. a people for a, for a history book, as yeah. well as a uh, your sixth generation grandfather is Ben Franklin. True. So is politics just kind of hardwired into your DNA? Politics is hardwired into my DNA, but not not from that. Well, maybe yeah, probably from my grandfather, but from my parents and my siblings. All my siblings are older and everybody was always very politically active. Um, I have a sister who's been in politics for a million years and was John Kerry's scheduler and, uh, you know, was in the Deval Patrick campaign. And so you had a little bit of an idea of our political bent, but um, now, yes, we're not, not the entire family. The entire family's not there. Was there at any point that you decided maybe, hey, maybe I'll instead of pursuing acting as a career, maybe I'll do something in politics? No. No, there never was. There never was. Um, it's not too I, late. It's never too late. You could, you, yeah, could, you could do. You could run. True. You could run now. And apparently, you don't need to know much. Not apparently. So no. um, anyway, it's yeah. No, I, I I've always been interested in it. But the I was I served on the board of uh, Screen Actors Guild for a couple of years, and that was as much politics as I'm I needed. doing that now. It's a good yeah, time. God isn't bless it? you. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> What would you say, since both of you've been involved in something like that? What is the difference between politics in Hollywood as opposed to politics? in the nation's capital. Politics in Hollywood, people are better looking. That's right. Uh, ho- <laughs> DC is, is Hollywood with ugly people. It's, uh, it's, somebody coined that phrase yeah, long ago and it's kind of stuck for a while, but yeah. Show business. Right? Um, but it's, it, it, it's a different, I, ho- DC is a different form of show business in a way, as far as I'm concerned. I and mean, it's just, it's, you're, you're, you're just selling a different narrative in a way. But, and uh, they're both high school. And they're both high school, yeah. yeah. With, except they're, they're, in DC the consequences are Dire. Higher stakes. Yeah, true. Yeah, it's, it, other than bad ratings or nobody seeing your film, uh, this has consequences for the majority of the whole. Globally. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What As we're to. seeing right now unfold on the world stage right now. So uh, the consequences could not be higher. So and, and the time could not be better for a show like ours, I think. So. Well, so America 2.0, it's currently Skillfully uh, done. number 11 uh, worldwide for, for podcasts and number three in the UK. But it all, Can yeah. I say number 11 out of... Something like five hundred thousand podcasts yeah. in the world were number eleven. It's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So we're number one. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Number one. Uh, and that's largely. Yeah. 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 That's right. Yeah. Without Jack Coleman, I mean, <clears throat> sorry I mean, guys. Where would it be? <laughs> Thanks, man. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. <laughs> the America like yeah. one point six. Use your, use your check. <laughs> yeah. But this all has to start with an idea, yeah. and this starts off with you, JS. So, yeah. you, uh, as I've been as I've been told, you started this off as a idea for a television show. Yes, yeah, so my co-creator, David Carlyle, and I, uh, we had this idea because we were seeing politics was 
or is still is incredibly divisive and getting you know it's all about teams and keeping score and it's becoming very negative and you know to us i think politics is supposed to be aspirational it's something that should inspire the best and the brightest and it's you know, not the case that's happening right now. So we thought, why not tell a story and try to do something where we can inspire people and bring back hope? So that's sort of where the kernel of the idea about rebooting America came from, hence America 2.0. So as you have this idea of kind of rebooting America, uh, how, how well versed were you in politics before you started writing the script? And then how much more have you become since not only writing the script, but now doing America 2.0? Um, not very. My, my writing partner was a lot more interested in the political side of it. Um, he is American, and I don't have the cool accent, but I'm actually British. And um, we you were gotta just... You got to get the accent. <laughs> yeah. you should just, I, I you, can you just fake it? Just, we're on television, man. Just, as the uh, podcast just goes talk along. like this for an hour. <laughs> Hello. I'm Jay. It's my Slowly oh, slide yeah. into it. Um, yeah, so so uh, we sort of started doing our research, and the more uh, as we were writing, we discovered that we actually both love politics. And uh, any project I do, I immerse myself deeply into it. And by the end of it, I thought a lot of people, um, Spencer, and um, you know, a lot of people read it, and they asked how many years we had spent on the hill. And there's no higher compliment than you know somebody who's never even been to D.C. to be able to, to speak to that. And since then, we've become incredibly uh, politically interested, reading everything, watching everything, being involved, because, you know, uh, in order to do a show like this, we have to know what we're talking about. Can I can I throw in a, a plug for this, this writer? Because I, I, J.S. and I met at the table read. I was invited... Uh, uh, to a table read to sit and, and read this this script that I that I, I didn't was not aware of JS or his his career and at the end of it I came away thinking this is the one of the best political dramas I've ever read one of the best pilot scripts I've ever read um, he and I struck up a friendship and I asked JS if I could send the script uh, to my girlfriend who happens to be uh, Dana Bash she's a reporter at CNN she covers politics for CNN and she read it and she also gave it to Mark Preston who also covers politics at CNN, and basically they came back and said A plus, spot on, like <laughs> like you nailed it. Mm -hmm. um, no higher praise I think could be could yeah. be garnered from you know from people Absolutely. like that. So um, for somebody who's not from the political world or as immersed in the political world, you know you 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 hit it spot on. And this is also just a, a guy who can write in any genre and makes films and any does genre. and does. Yeah. <laughs> Jack and I met when I when I directed a sci-fi short film that played at around fifty festivals yeah. around the world. So that's sort of yeah, I, I do think that's cool. Yeah. Very yeah. cool. So when this doesn't actually move on from the pilot uh, from the table read onto uh, the pilot at series stage, whose idea is it then? Say, is it Spencer? Is you reaching out to JS to say, don't let this idea die? I I mean I I was in touch with him for months saying yeah. you know th this is I of course being an actor you know and we're constantly like looking for the next terrific job and at the end of the table read I walked yeah. up to him and I said I hate to sound like one of those guys but I'm gonna be one of those guys and if anything comes of this please keep me in mind and you know and I think you had said you know you're Porter Purvis yeah and yeah, um, so we stayed in touch and I think over the course of the the, the, the ensuing months after the table read when it looked like nothing was really happening with it from from a, a representational standpoint, um, you know, JS came up with the light bulb idea and said, "Yeah, I'm going to turn it into a podcast." Yeah, because said, essentially go, what we did <laughs> in doing the table read, we had Spencer, we had Shinola, we had a couple of other incredible actors who were part of the podcast, and in listening to it, I just thought, "Oh my God, this is like great." radio theater yeah, too is. and um jeremy gordon our incredible casting director and co-producer he when he put that amazing cast together in listening to it i thought okay if i tweaked it broke it into smaller uh episodes and focused on each character i think i can make something out of this that we could actually go and do it's, it's incredibly immersive i mean when you, you listen to mm -hmm. the five episodes and it really just pulls you into that world in such an, an incredible way like uh, like the best podcast that I I didn't know what a podcast was mm -hmm. until I, I you know I think until we met yeah. each other and then uh, and now listening to ours it just yeah. like it brings you into that world in such a, a, a an amazing way. 
Now, so, JS, was the I, was the fractured kind of narrative that you have in the story mm -hmm. was that initially in the uh, the the TV script, or no. that was it kind of adapted here for the podcast? No, it was adapted for the podcast because we realized that when you're listening to a podcast, you can't keep. 15, 16, 17 different voices and characters in your head. So I decided that Seth McGuire, our protagonist, played by Patrick J. Adams, is quite, kind of going to be the anchor. And so episode one is about him and Olivia, um, which is Autumn Reeser. Episode two is about him and Anna Rossi Shinola's character. Episode three goes with the Kate Walsh character. Episode four is about Spencer and Jack. Episode five is about Fishburne. And episode six is by that point, hopefully everybody knows the yeah. voices and, and we can put them all together. So we just wanted to anchor it around so that for an audience perspective, you know, as a storyteller, I'm constantly trying to think, what will people grasp to? Where am I going to lose them? What are things that I can do to keep everybody focused? And the narrative device of the interviewer, we have a fantastic actress, Lorian Haynes, uh, playing an interviewer who is talking that's sort of the narrative bridging device and that was something that came specifically for the podcast. I, it's it's been, and, and I don't know I don't want to spoil about episode six sure. coming out tomorrow yeah. but uh, I'm curious about the time frame where that present day interviews happen between the interviewer right. and uh, Seth to yeah. see does this happen? You'll have to. You have to, you'll have to listen. Can't, can't yeah. is, that, is that revealed but, by the end of it? Oh yeah, yes. right. it is, cool. in, 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 in a really mm -hmm. remarkable way. Right. But Very the, interesting. The, the great thing about what you do as a writer is, he, you know, we're talking about how he's sort of broken up the different storylines, and it really crescendos with right. with the Lawrence Fishburne episode in episode in episode right. four, right. Um, where uh, Patrick Adams' character Seth McGuire, who used to work for the outgoing. President, uh, the former president uh, Rutherford, played by Fishburne, uh, and they have their their meeting, and uh, and it really, I mean, the series really comes to a, a head, and so the last episode is like you you know you're on you're on yeah. pins and needles. Exactly. Well, certainly the president has that opinion where it's like maybe if I would have listened to more of your ideas, right. we could have been in a better spot, or we could have been doing something different right. now than right. we're at now. But whether it was just not having the political capital to burn, or just out of my own fear. Sure. Uh, they didn't and Seth has no political capital right. at all. Yeah. In, fact, in fact, there's an episode where you, you say, you guys are bad at this. Right. I mean, he's really bad at his job, but somehow he's he's so determined, and he's a smart, smart guy, and he's so determined that he's... Sometimes not having a lot of capital and being willing to burn anyway yeah. Yeah. Has, yeah. Has, has, has its own exactly. uh, advantages. Yeah. yeah. It's like, it, it certainly, uh, with your involvement in politics and your research and everything, how much is, has fear really just kind of played a part in some of the choices that we have or haven't made in some of the presence that we look forward to? Is that been like just that fear has really held us back from doing great things? You want to uh, take that one? I, I, could, I could go off on a... <laughs> I'll, I mean, I, 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 I really do think fear has taken a, a big, it's a big part, but that's why we Look wanted the to... The, the title yeah. of the, the Bob Woodward book. Right, exactly. That's, but yeah. I think that's why we're trying to shift the conversation to hope. We're trying to shift the conversation to what can be done, not, oh my God, we're cowering, right? <laughs> yeah. So uh, that was yeah. our... our uh, and also, you know, with other incredible shows, uh, but like Scandal and House of Cards, um, they came out during a time when we had a very different political atmosphere, and I feel counter-programming often works. So at this point, we wanted to do something that really is aspirational, that's positive, that's optimistic, that you can say politics and people don't roll their eyes right off the bat. That's our hope. I mean, you, 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 know, you referenced the West Wing at the top of this. I mean, I've found myself going back on Netflix and going back and watching, mm -hmm. net, you know, watching West Wing from the beginning just because it reminds me of a time when politics was hopeful and aspirational. I mean, it it, it sort of closely hewed the you know the Clinton yeah. administration at the time, but it, it really it reminds you a it, you know great great writing, great dramatic yeah. writing, great acting, and um, you know and how how hopeful politics can actually be if people you know work in a bipartisan way and work with each other, and so that's. That's what we're, we're, we're aiming for in this thing. No, it is nice to feel that even though uh, our elected officials or the people that work with them may stumble or fail, that we still know that they are working for our yes, best and, purposes. Which is, which is where we've gone off the yes. path at this point. <laughs> yeah. is that, yeah. uh, you know, I don't know that anybody feels or not enough people feel that uh, the public officials are actually working for the public good. Yeah. Um, rather than their private good. So that's, uh, I mean, that, I think that's what's so great about this show is that somebody who really cares about uh, you know what what his job is supposed to be yeah. yeah and and trying to do it as well as he can and the fact that also the fact that he doesn't come from 
you you, know, you didn't have a political background. Right. Yeah. You're just a terrific writer and mm -hmm. a smart yeah. guy, and so you're not coming at it from a cynical point of view. Right. There's nothing cynical at all about the politics in this. No. In this I guess there's podcast. nothing cynical about him. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> no, and it's, and it's just, so easy to right. be cynical these scary. days. scary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. my co-writer is even more of an optimist, if, if anybody can believe that. And the two touchstones for us were, obviously, Beyond the West Wing, which is, you know, one of the greatest shows ever made. Uh, we tried to channel very much uh, Mr. Smith, Ghost of Washington, and... Um, Weirdly enough, Jerry Maguire, that one person, you know, sort of having so, yeah. that sense like, oh, I can change things and, you know, just making yeah. a difference in one person's life can actually, you know, have consequences beyond this. So that was something we wanted to lead in. A lot of episode six deals precisely with why Seth is doing what he's doing. So I hope people tune into that. Now, Spencer and Jack, the two of you play reporters, uh, yeah. certainly in, in different stages of Black their career. Black hat, white hat. That's right. There you go. <laughs> Total accident. Should, should we? This is, this is the moment. Switch, should we switch? That's it. I, think, I feel like we should switch. Uh, yeah. Well, you should wear the white hat now. Oh, well, I'm, I'm happy to <laughs> yeah. do it. Um, but I got the black shirt, so either way. Yeah. There you go. So, uh, of course, Jack, you played Dan Carrington, and mm -hmm. I just have to ask JS, is that in a nod so to Stephen Carrington from Dynasty, or just have his He has no dance? idea I no? was on a show called yeah. Dynasty. He's so young. I, you I, 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 for, I'm kidding. 17 I, years. I, 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 genuinely, know. Yeah. I genuinely, we had written the character, and, and we had written it for Jack, because I knew, but I knew nothing. And when he read it, the first thing he texted me was like, Carrington? Carrington? Really? really? <laughs> that, that was his text. Carrington, comma, yeah. really? And I, I was like, wait, what? I, I don't understand what this is. And, so he and, I, and after the table read, I thought, what the hell kind of a name is Porter Purvis? <laughs> yeah. And now I just love it. I just love it because I know guys like right. Porter Purvis in DC. <laughs> yeah. you know, it's just a terrific sort yeah. of throwback name. It's yeah. a great name. The names are all good. You can yeah. sink your teeth in. But we them. are we're we're rivals and sometime friends. But there's a there's a great kind of snarky back and forth. I think the friendship was probably uh, kind of years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think we're sure. sort of gone off on. Uh, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm I'm much more the sort of the tabloid type. You know, guy that's and he 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 still has. A little bit of uh, dignity left, and a little uh, bit, a little bit. I tr I try to hang on to my dignity uh, through throughout this, and and he just keeps trying to punch holes in it every time we we encounter each other in the show, and it's great. It's... And but getting to work with Jack, and also we're we're, we're fellow Dukies, so which oh, is, there you go. Uh, All right, right. <laughs> yeah. Is that okay? Can we say yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, it's just you know, TV's all over. Tar Heel Nation. Oh, that's, that's true. Right. Oh, that's true. Okay. Down the Tar Heels. Uh, there you go. Well, I, I'm, pr I'm proud to say that I, I got, I got uh, after my after my junior year, I was uh, I was asked to take some time off. Uh, Were you really? Well, I was. You know, I I, I was. Were you a wild child. A, yeah, I was kind of a wild child. Believe it or not. Wow. You, I, I, I realized very late in my tenure there that you had to go to class. Ah. You couldn't just eat pizza, drink beer, do theater. Um, you know, depends what your last name is. <laughs> that's true, uh, um, but I, I was I was not a good student, and so I, I ended up leaving after my junior year, taking three years off, and I ended up going to work at NPR in mm. DC, and that's when I started acting. I started yeah. working in, in in at the Arena Stage in wow. DC, um, so I ever I never got my degree from Duke. Uh, yeah. I, I I graduated thank Lottie. I got I got mine and thank, got out. Thank Lottie. Oh, nice. That's Come on, nice. Guys. Two, three, yeah. four. Nicely done. Thank you. Yes. Uh, thank thank Lottie. I, I uh, got mine and I got out of there before I, they had a chance to rethink. No, all these <clears> sessions <throat> for the podcast were they all uh, were the actors recorded together? No. Not a one. Not no. a one. Except oh, wow. except for them. Except ours. We were the they, only one were where we got to be in the room with each other and. You yeah, know, and bing, 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 bing. Nobody That's was true. else and the in the room. entire thing? The entire this, thing. All of the stuff with Kate oh Walsh. God. Yeah. Uh, I read Patrick Adams stuff opposite yeah. Kate. Yeah. And did Fishburn and Patrick read together? No. no. Fishburn and you read. I read opposite Fishburn right. as well. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. So. No, that, that was wow. one of my favorite compliments yeah. when we played it for Fishburn, and he said... Uh, you know, not to take anything away, but this is, you know, this kind of chemistry you can't fake. And I smiled and I said, that's absolutely true, except for the fact that they've it's never fake. met. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They've never met each other. Yeah. And, he just and the stuff, I mean, what's amazing about, I mean, I, I have high praise for every actor in the show. And I, I met Patrick working on a show called Luck years ago with Dustin Hoffman, the Michael Mann thing. And he was kind of freshly out of SC. Mm -hmm. And and I and I just marveled at how good he was yeah. and how how able to just jump right into scenes with Dustin Hoffman was. So I got a sense early on, yeah. even before Suits, right. it was like two years before he was on mm -hmm. Suits and how great he was. And Kate I've known for years, and 
the fact that it's a testament to how good both of oh. they are individually because the chemistry between the two of them never having been in a room together right. in this thing is 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 electric it's quite it's quite Palpable. amazing yeah. and also like just what you guys did in well the, and the the obviously the editing you know putting together the sure. those yeah. pieces that right. that were tonally yeah. uh, akin because yeah. it yeah. could have got it could have really come off the rails if right. you know you got one person who's sort of at at an 11 and another person who's right. at a 2 no it's yeah. that's it's really <clears throat> remarkable and also your your sound editor yeah. did make me sound Sexier than I am in, in real life. Oh, even yeah. sexier. Even sexier, and it's I, it's wow. I, yeah. a lot of people say that it's not possible. Yeah. <laughs> guys, good thing you true. weren't wearing that hat. Yes, yeah, so that, that might have just put everything over. Been, the good night. thing it was just a podcast. <laughs> good night, everybody. Right now. <laughs> so now I mentioned it. Of course, the uh, at least the series finale that we know of so far. But right. is that a series finale just a season one? Will there be more? I, I would say it's a season finale Ooh, right. right now. Um, you know, we don't. You know, we we can't say much, but there's a lot more of the story to tell. Uh, and, yeah, I, I would definitely say that people won't be disappointed in the ending. They will get a conclusion, but yeah. it is, it's not, it's by no means this is the end of the yeah. story. So I think... You know, it's it's just sort of a a really cool. It stopping kind of point. it kind of ends with an ellipsis, it right? Kind of, kind of like to be continued. You get yeah. you get a sense that there's a lot more to the story to be told. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. I'm excited to hear the rest of it. Yeah. And now, Spencer, I know you've got you are playing another reporter coming up at the uh, end towards the end of November in the front runner. <laughs> speaking of speaking of fear, yeah, I'm playing Bob, Bob Woodward. Woodward. Yes, yeah, in the front runner coming out next uh, next month and. Uh, um, and that was pretty cool. I got to I got to meet him. Oh, that'd be uh, awesome. Yeah, it was. It was did pretty... you? Are you doing the Chicago accent? I did the Chicago accent, and uh, and you know, weirdly enough, because when I said to, uh, to Jason Reitman, the director, because when Bob when Robert Redford, I almost said Bob Redford. I, just, I, I don't know, it was Bob Redford. <laughs> Bobby, but when Bobby, 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 when Robert Redford did Bob Woodward in All the President's Men, nobody knew who Bob Woodward was because there's no, there's no twenty four hour news cycle, social media. So Robert Redford was just Robert Redford, but now you see Woodward on TV all the time and throughout the years, and so he has this very yeah. flat, you know, Chicago. Um, so I, I asked Jason, I said, I, I have to, I have to do that, and he, he let me play with it. So um, I'm not sure how much of the movie I'm left in it, but um, I'm happy. It's good. It's what I hear. It's terrific. I'm going to see it next week. Awesome. Yeah. And Jack, I know you're uh, doing some stuff on Hawaii Five O this season. Uh, yeah, and oh, I just finished. Lucky, uh, lucky oh, that boy. was yeah, that's a nice, <laughs> nice gig yeah. over there, and then uh, in Chicago PD and. Just a you know a recurring part of uh, uh, Bob Bob Ruzek, Disco Bob. Not disco the, Bob, uh, all right. The, the, Do you get yeah, to Bob. dance to disco music? In Fortunately, this? no. I will <coughs> Tivo the shit out of it. Oh yeah, no. You as <laughs> as well. You should just in case. <laughs> okay, good. I might throw a move in there. Just uh, you good, know, good, just yeah. to, good, uh, good. Yeah. I want to see you dance. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. or at least wear bell bottoms. Do you wear bell bottoms? Well, I'm I'm wearing bell bottom underwear. But, That's true. Uh, there you go. <laughs> all right. That's just because they're old. <laughs> And JS, uh, in addition to hopefully putting together uh, a second season of America 2.0, yeah. what else do you have coming up? Well, I have you know a bunch of uh, TV and film projects in development, but actually I have a short film that I wrote and directed. It's called Someday that is actually having its LA premiere on Friday. It's playing at the Downtown LA Film Festival. It's terrific. And it's in um, it's playing in the evening. It stars Catherine Castro and Chris Santos, and it's about uh, it's just this sweet romantic story so very different from everything else that I'm doing that's um, two people meet on a non-stop flight from Sydney to LA and it's just two strangers they're talking to each other sparks fly what happens between them over that journey knowing that they might never it's see it's really each other lovely again. Catherine so, is also on the podcast oh, very nice. and for fans of hers Dominican she's a Dominican superstar yeah she's um, fantastic and she's really lovely in the film yeah. and he, though he's not a reporter I'm also about to play Sean Hannity uh, in a movie about oh. Megan Kelly and Roger Ailes, oh, so boy. Um, so that'll be interesting. I can't wait to. I'm gonna I'm gonna wear a really ridiculous wig and talk in a really funny accent. <laughs> End my career. All right. Take three or four yeah. espressos before yeah. going yeah. on. Yeah, so. sure. How you doing? Yeah. Fake news, huh? <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for this episode of After Buzz TV Spotlight On. Make sure you check out the, the finale of America 2.0 when it drops tomorrow, October 17th. And uh, stay tuned for uh, where's the best place to keep track of uh, America 2.0 Season 2 and all the other information. Um, so you can you can uh, look at, um, uh, on Twitter, we're at America, two, uh, America 2 Pod. On Instagram, we're America 2.0 Podcast. And our website is reinventingtomorrow.com, where you can also find these amazing hats and shirts and merch hats. yeah you can get vote seth we're moving to merch. Hats, t-shirts mugs hats absolutely uh so, 
they're they're, they're everywhere. Like you, yeah. you can't you can't swing a cat in this town without seeing somebody yeah. wear a hat. But ladies and gentlemen, I'll tell you all right now, you're not going to wear it better than Spencer Garrett. So I'm sorry. No, 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 no. That's, <laughs> that's not even legal. Come on. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it. I've been your host, Frank Moran. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Happy Go Jackie. We'll see you back here for another episode of After Buzz TV Spotlight on right here at After Buzz TV. Bye, everybody. Thank you, Frank. Oh, thank you, man. Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank you for tuning in to AfterBuzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. 